Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Girl with the Scalper. This is Dr. Mehek. I'm here to help you out to fulfill your dream to become a dentist in the United States of America. And today I have come up with another video for all of my colleagues and my friends who are planning to come to US. Now, today's video is going to be especially for those who are somehow already you know settled in Canada or are planning to go to Canada and then eventually moving to US I know uh, thinking like this like moving first to Canada then why do we need to move to US now moving to US could be because of many reasons so let me briefly tell you about the Canadian licensing uh, pathway so what happens there is if you plan to settle in Canada and become a dentist there you have two options first is either to get uh, your licensing route which involves giving up four exams uh, that is the AFKs, ACJ, A A ACS which is now changed up to another clinical exam and the last one is the NDEB certification the OSCE which is soon is going to be converted to a virtual OSCE right so after giving these four exams, that is the licensing route, you can practice as a dentist. Now, in this situation, you are just an NDEB certified, right? Another pathway is giving the first exam, that is the AFK, is getting a Canadian DDS or DMD, and then getting your NDEB certification. In any which way to practice in Canada, you need an NDEB certification. Right. So there are many circumstances in which you want to move to the US either because you want to do your residency or you always had that dream of, you know, pursuing uh, your career in the United States or you just want to flourish your practice and have your own clinic and your own setup in US as well as in Canada. Right. So this is for all those who are already NDEP certified or who are planning to do an NDEP certification. So I have a good news for you guys. After getting an NDEP certificate, you can still practice in the United States. Now, I won't say all states, but you can practice in three states, which is, I think, quite a lot. Right? So are you a foreign trained dentist? And regardless of whether you are NDEP certified or you are not NDEP certified so what options do you have in case you want to practice in the United States so you can practice in these three states so we will be coming up in the video with the three states but before that don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon so you get an update whenever i upload a video and also guys do follow me on my instagram channel that is girl with the scalpel i had been coming up with amazing content you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me on instagram i'll be happy to answer to your queries and if you want videos regarding certain content do let me know and if you have any issues or any uh, any of the questions related to my content do you can comment down in the comment box and even you can dm me so let's get started with today's video so the first state where you can practice in the united states with an ndep certification is minnesota now see minnesota is a place where anyone can practice but there is a catch here Minnesota is basically a place where you can practice regardless of being NDEP certifi certified or not whether you have a dental degree from any part of the world if it gets accepted by the board then you can practice in Minnesota I have already made the seven steps which you need to follow to become certified in Minnesota you can have a look at that video it will be somewhere up in the description box uh, in the link or below in the description box you can have a look at that follow the steps and then you can become certified in minnesota again it's a time consuming process it might take you a year a year and a half but eventually you will be able to practice in minnesota and after maybe three years five years down the line you can practice in other states as well based on your experience right so let's move on to the other state which I think you guys might be really excited about. So that is Colorado. 
yes colorado can be your home if you want to practice at f year and db certified so let's know what are the prerequisites now here i won't be telling you about the small tad bits which you can find all the description in the description box i have given the link you can check out the pdf and you can see what all other prerequisites are there which includes the jurisprudence examination then certain uh, health indemnity insurance and certain uh, photographs and certain application fees which you need to give apart from this now uh, to be uh, to get a license in colorado it can happen in two ways either you can give an examination or it is by the endorsement mostly in the states of us you get these two options either by the examination or by endorsement by examination you mean you need to give the regional dental exams Uh, which includes the WREB exam, the ADEX exam, which is very popular. Many of the uh, students who are from the non-accredited uh, schools, when they appear for their residency, post their residency, they give these regional exams, and with these exams, you can actually practice in many states in US, right? So, what are the prerequisites for the examination if you want to practice in Colorado, right? So, this is uh, the four things which you need so you need to have any one of the uh, given list so first is uh, you have to request the passing scores of examination by a regional testing agency again these adex examination these regional examinations need to be conducted by the dental schools and these mostly occur uh, if you are already in your residency you have to request your school they can conduct it and then you can pass your exams right then second is if you have already completed your pgy pg1 residency that is a post graduate year one year residency at least minimum of 12 months of residency needs to be completed post then you can appear for your adex exam and then you can eventually apply for your license in colorado or if you have a hybrid portfolio now this hybrid portfolio is more of importance for the california state license uh, criteria where in under this you can apply in any of the five schools in the california you can study for a year uh, in the agdes or the pg gprs and then you can appear for your adex exam and then apply for your license you can do it in california as well as you can do it in colorado as well Then the last and the most important one for my Canadian colleagues is to complete the Canadian Objective Structured Clinical License or the OSCEs. Right, these OSCEs, post your OSCE and clinical examination, you get an NDEB certificate. This is the last step. Regardless of whether you are have you have cho chosen um, you know a direct licensure route or if you have taken your DDS or DMDs and then you have given your OSCEs and then you want to practice here. So with after your askies you can also apply for this colorado state regardless of giving any regional examination either you can give a regional examination if you are dds from canada or you can just apply with the ndep certification which you need to practice in your country as well then by the endorsement now here for the endorsement what happens is you need to have an active practice in dentistry in us or in canada for at least 300 hours per year for at least 5 of the last 7 years so if you're already a dentist in canada you want to have another clinic you want to flourish your practice you want to practice in colorado or due to any reason you're moving to us and want to settle down in colorado if you have that dental experience of practicing at least for 300 hours per year for last 5 years then you can apply without any examination on the endorsement application front right or if you have been teaching dentistry you've been an an a lecturer an assistant professor an associate professor in any of uh, the dental universities then you de need to have at least 300 hours of you know taking care of patients in an accredited program in at least 5 years of the last 7 years so you can be even a faculty and then again you can apply in colorado then if you had been a dentist in military for one of at least 5 years just one year of practice in military mind you getting in a job in military in especially in canada is only for i guess the canadian citizens so if you have that one year of practice you can always have an option of moving to colorado applying here and having your practice here right 
or you need to pass a Colorado Dental Board approved clinical exam within the past one year. This is the only criteria with the endorsement. So for endorsement yeah, applicants, if you have already been practicing in, in US or Canada, either you can show your practice or if you have been a faculty, you have to show your practice for at least 300 hours for last five years or if you had been in service and military one year of practice is required and if at all you want to transfer by endorsement then you need to apply for any of the colorado dental board approved examinations that is the addicts exam etc you can apply for that right now the next state post the colorado is the washington state now with the washington state there is a little catch here Yes, you can practice with an NDEP certification here in Washington state. But the catch here is that if you have done your DDS or DMD in Canada, post that and after giving your ASCIs and getting NDEP certified, then only you can apply for your Washington state license to practice. If you do not have a DDS or DMD from Canada, then my friends you can still apply but it would require certain and a little amount of training so let's see what all training is required so licensing by the examination for the licensing by the examination as i already told you that you need to have either written scores of inbdes along with the canadian dental boards or you need to give your ADEX exam or you need to give the WREB exam or the Commission of the Dental Competency Assessment exams or you need to give NDEP but this NDEP certificate will only be accepted if you have done an accredited course from a Canadian school that is if you have a DDS or DMD from Canada only then this examination would be valid for you right or you have completion of a qualifying postgraduate residency for example if you have in the lieu of the practical examinations if you do not have this or you have done a general practice residency or a pediatric residency again a catch for many of my pediatric colleagues an advanced education in general residency program that is this is the gprs and the aegds which is located in the washington state and it is accredited by the coda then you can apply for post-residency program and practice in Washington state. Now for all of those who have additional requirements which are required for a non-approved dental school, for example, you have done your dentistry from India or Pakistan, what do you need? You need to include at least two years of additional pre-doctoral or post-doctoral academic years from a coda graded program, right? So you need to, you know, have either done your GPR for two years, AEGDs for two years or any of the dental specialties for at least two years, right? Then you can apply with the examination. First, you have to appear for your residency. Then you have to give these licensure exams, the, the regional exams, and then you can apply for the Washington state, which is actually the rule for almost every state in the US, right? Then if you want to have a license without the examination then you can apply if you hold an active dental license in any other of the states for example you're practicing for example you were practicing in minnesota right so you have practiced there five years now you want to move to washington state you can do that right then you need to show a proof of your dental practice so you need to have a dental practicing for minimum of 20 hours per week for four consecutive years preceding this application in another US state or territory. Then all the dentists who are serving in the United States Federal Services, you have to submit a letter from your commanding officer, your outlining duties, the length of the service and whether and any adverse actions were taken or reported with you, if at all you have had been practicing in federal services. Then if you are a dentist who was employed in a dental school, you had been a faculty, you need, the, you need to submit a documentation from your dean or any of the appropriate administrators of your institution regarding the length, the terms of employment, responsibilities and any of the adverse actions which were taken, right? Then if you were a dentist in a dental residency program, then also you need to submit documentation from the director or the appropriate administrator regarding the length or the duty. So even if you had been a faculty, after that too you can apply, right? 
now for those who are additional requirements who are non approved again the graduates from a non approved dental school must meet the requirements which requires to for the graduates of the non coda schools to complete a coda accredited one year of post dental residency and hold an active dental license of state of at least 4 years if applying for licensure without examination so if you can appear if you have a year of uh, your residency uh, and you get approved for example there are many states where you just need one year of residency for example it is uh, virginia uh, you had been practicing in virginia you had one year gpr and you have four years of practice and you do not want to give your exams then after four years of your practice you can obviously appear for you know your um, uh, practice in uh, the state of washington by the endorsement right so these are the requirements here minnesota could be a very good option for you again colorado could be an excellent option for you you need just to just do your documentations washington yeah if you have your dds or dmd then or if you can manage to you know secure see if you manage to secure one year of uh, g pgr agd you can do it up to 2 years and even you can do in do a dental specialty after completing your specialty you can apply in the washington state and you can practice as a specialist there and even a general dentist see guys the best option that i would suggest you if you want to practice in us is the advanced standing programs by far the best for canadians they already have the dds or dmd if they want to have you know flourish their practice then they can always go in for an opt for these states they can practice in these states and after practicing in the, these states for some time maybe 3 years 4 years and 5 years they can spread their practices to other states as well so it's a process it takes time but eventually you'll get there right so this brings me to the end of today's video i hope you liked it i hope uh, i was able to provide you all the information which was required at the end i would like to say it always seems impossible until it's done so guys keep working keep motiv being motivated motivate your colleagues you know uh, just study hard and don't give up on your dreams so till the next time bye bye for today